hello everyone so we have we are discussing uh, about our branchiostoma or the amphioxus and we completed the general morphological features of branchiostoma and the digestive system in detail and uh, in this presentation we will be looking into the respiratory mechanism and uh, the blood vascular system of branchiostoma okay yeah regarding respiratory uh, system actually um, a proper respiratory system it is lacking in the case of um, the branchiostoma uh, we can see uh, one minute okay. um, we can see that the uh, in the case of a branchiostoma the pharyngeal wall it is uh, they are highly vascular and hence what happens is uh, what is vascular actually richly supplied with water i'm sorry richly supplied with blood vessels and we can see that the water it flows so close to the pharyngeal wall that there is a, a high possibility of exchange of gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide between the um, water in the pharyngeal cavity with the blood in the uh, blood vessels which supply the pharyngeal okay so uh, we can find that the pharyngeal wall it is richly vascular and the water current entering the pharyngeal cavity brings in fresh oxygen isn't it the blood flows so close to the uh, the internal lining of the uh, pharyngeal wall and uh, hence the there is a gaseous exchange between carbon dioxide in blood and oxygen in, wa in water okay and another thing is like uh, in the case of tracheostoma they don't have uh, any respiratory pigments in the blood and hence what happens is uh, blood is actually not uh, having any role in the uh, transportation of uh, this gases right so uh, this is uh, with respect to the uh, the um, this one what we call uh, the respiratory mechanism it's not so peculiar now uh, we'll pass on to the next one that is the um, One minute. Okay, we'll pass on to the next one that is the blood vascular system. Okay. Now, blood vascular system or the circulatory system of branchiostoma, it is a closed type. Uh, it is uh, well developed and the circulation and the, uh, what do you call, the systems, the uh, blood systems and the lymphatic system, it is very peculiar. Okay. Now, as said, blood is... Um, lacking of uh, any respiratory pigment and corpuscles and hence blood is colorless okay and besides uh, these blood vessels it also contain uh, certain lymph spaces for example as in the metapleural folds i hope you remember what is metapleural fold right towards the ventral side on the lateral sides of the body you, you can find metapleural folds externally and inside that they have do have lymph spaces right similarly in the dorsal and the ventral ventral veins it also possesses the um, lymph spaces so besides these blood vessels uh, the um, it also the blood also it is uh, it occurs in lymph spaces such as in metapleural folds and dorsal ventral fins okay now what is the main function of uh, what you call blood um, actually, in uh, other organisms or in higher organisms, we can see that blood has a very important role in the um, transportation of uh, gases or it is actually a medium for transportation of gases, oxygen and the carbon dioxide. But here, they don't have any role in gaseous exchange or gaseous transport. Instead, they have uh, main, the major functions of blood. It is the transportation of food and excretory products. Now, the next part of blood vascular system, it is the heart. Uh, heart is lacking and uh, um, um, all the blood vessels hence have to be uh, muscular and contractile in nature okay so the vessels are contractile and muscular in nature because of the lacking of the heart right and in the case of blood vessels we can see that the endothelial lining is absent now what is endothelial lining that is blood vessels um, the inner wall the innermost wall which faces the lumen of the blood vessel through which uh, which actually uh, comes in contact with the blood that part is that lining internal lining is referred as the endothelial line and such kind of endothelial lining is absent in the case of blood vessels of branchiostoma 
uh, except for dorsal aorta. So dorsal aorta possesses an endothelial lining. Okay, now uh, there is no distinction between arteries and veins. They are structurally uh, similar. They don't have. They don't show any structural differences. Right, but only with respect to the what you call to differentiate uh, the blood flow. Um, we have uh, given arteries and veins as an indicator. Okay, now there are major um, main uh, vessels um, which are principal vessels which are listed. Uh, you can see there are seven like sinus venosus, ventral iota, dorsal iota, subintestinal vein, hepatic portal system, cardinal vein and parietal vein. We will look into it in detail with the help of a diagram. Okay, here you can see. Fine. So we will see the diagrams. Um, initially, we can locate the sinus venosus because it is a, a small uh, this part is the sinus venosus over here. You can find a label in one minute. Okay. Uh, this part is the sinus venosus. Fine. Now, the sinus venosus is a small, thin-walled, sac-like structure uh, present just below the... Okay, before that, we will see the... Um, what do you call it? The body. Right. This is actually uh, found surrounding the, um, the pharynx intestinal region. Here you can see the alimentary canal. Okay. I hope you can see, right, this part. Okay, I'll change the color. Mm. Okay, I'll take red itself. So here you can see the alimentary canal, the wall of the alimentary canal, right? Here. Clear. Okay. This part is the anterior. So this continues into the uh, prebranchial uh, region and the vestibule etc over here it extends into the intestine and the anus this part is the intestine here this part is the intestine fine and this is the uh, midgut diverticula midgut diverticula okay this part right and this part is the pharynx fine and you can see the gill slits over here the oval obliquely placed gill slits okay so these are the major parts of alimentary canal and the major vessels it is being mentioned uh, with respect to the position to the alimentary canal i hope it is clear okay so uh, uh, now we will be discussing about the major uh, components of the what you call um, Alimentary canal. So we are uh, telling about the sinus venosus. This is the sinus venosus, which is a uh, small, uh, what you call sac-like structures, and that's a very small sac-like structure which are, which is present uh, posterior to the pharynx on the ventral side. Okay, it is closer to the midverti mid diverticulum as well as the pharynx post uh, position posterior to that. Okay. Then it receives this part, it receives blood from various uh, part of the body. Okay, we can just see. Uh, we'll just see the first one, right? Um, there are two cardinal veins. Cardinal veins, okay, you can see one over here. Where is it labeled? Yeah, anterior. Um, this one, minute, okay. This is the one anterior. Uh, Cardinal vein, another is posterior cardinal vein, two cardinal veins. Okay, these cardinal veins they bring blood from the ventrolateral regions of the body. That is, it brings from the lateral uh, region. So there will be two, one on this side and one you can see, right? This is the posterior cardinal vein, and this one is the anterior cardinal vein. Okay. Similarly, you will have it on the other side, on the other side of the uh, alimentary canal, okay, on the other side. So, here you can see the anterior cardinal vein as well as the posterior cardinal vein. And these two veins, they join together to form the common cardinal vein or what is referred as the ductus curiae. I hope it is clear. Okay, so these two veins, we can see the uh, po posterior cardinal vein brings blood from the uh, ventrolateral sides of the posterior part of the body posterior to the pharynx okay and from the anterior uh, part of the body 
um, from the pharynx as well as the anterior part of the pharynx the uh, blood is brought from um, brought through anterior carinal vein you can see uh, the direction of the blood flow it is in this direction it is here in from the anterior it is towards the uh, common cardinal vein is it clear okay so that is with respect to the cardinal veins now next set which brings um, uh, what you call uh, the blood to sinus venosus the next set it is the parietal vein this is the parietal vein okay here you can see it also reaches the sinus venosus parietal vein uh, uh, here uh, there is a pair of parietal vein one on this side and uh, on, on the other on the other side of the intestine okay so it brings uh, now the uh, parietal vein it will be somewhat like this and it will carry blood on uh, along the other side of the intestine and joins the sinus stenosis okay so this parietal vein it uh, carry blood from the dorsal body wall one on either side of the uh, what you call intestine they run above the intestine and then you can see they turn ventrally they bend uh, uh, towards the ventral side and joins the sinus stenosis okay so we spoke about the parietal vein the posterior cardinal vein sorry the posterior cardinal vein and the anterior cardinal vein okay now the next one the next one it starts from the caudal side okay the tail side so this is the caudal vein right the caudal vein it moves uh, what you call anteriorly and below the intestine it receives the intestinal vein you can see the intestinal vein written over here it receives the intestinal vein and once it receives the intestinal vein that part of the caudal vein when it moves forward it is referred as a sub intestinal vein now it is no longer caudal vein it is referred as the intestinal vein okay so sub intestinal vein it receives caudal vein from the posterior part as well as the intestinal vein from the intestinal side okay sub intestinal vein it moves anteriorly now listen over here uh, the subintestinal vein it moves anteriorly and then it enters the midgut and it forms the hepatic portal vein okay and at this hepat uh, uh, at the mid the midgut diverticulum when it forms a hepatic portal vein it go, gives us small branches into the midgut diverticulum right now uh, the blood from the hepatic portal vein it is received by the cells in the midgut diverticulum okay now this blood it is collected by another set of veins which joins to form the hepatic vein on the dorsal side you can see hepatic vein here okay this is the hepatic vein okay so this hepatic vein then moves out of the midgut diverticulum and joins the sinus stenosis clear okay so we will see once again the different ones right so here you have the parietal vein the posterior cardinal vein the anterior cardinal vein okay these all join together for to form the sinus stenosis similarly the caudal vein the subintestinal vein the hepatic portal vein the hepatic vein and oh sorry the hepatic vein and the sinus stenosis so this part is the sinus stenosis fine i hope these structures are very clear okay now what happens to the sinus venosus now uh, you can see the sinus venosus uh, gets the blood from all these parts the ventrolateral sides from the ventrolateral sides through the cardinal vein from the dorsal side through the parietal vein from the caudal as well as the intestinal side through the uh, what you call the uh, subintestinal vein right and from the midgut diverticulum through the hepatic vein okay now what happens to the blood in the sinus venosus the blood in the sinus venosus it moves anteriorly Okay, towards the uh, what you call um, ventral side of the pharynx and this vessel which carries it it is known as ventral aorta okay this vessel the whole vessel which flow which takes the blood from sinus stenosis anteriorly now uh, when we speak about the ventral aorta it is the single uh, vessel which uh, uh, runs anteriorly from the sinus stenosis and it is one of the largest artery it extends forward from the sinus stenosis and moves below the uh, pharyngeal region okay when it runs below the um, pharynx it uh, gives off certain branches right 
and these branches are known as you can see over here efferent yeah okay these are known as the efferent branchial artery you can see here efferent branchial arteries okay efferent branchial arteries so blood flows uh, into the actually ventral aorta it gives off paired lateral branches you can see over here also isn't it or along the other side paired lateral branches and these are referred as the efferent branchial artery and they run through the primary gill bar of the pharynx okay now at the base you can see uh, from uh, at the base of these uh, efferent arteries you can see certain bulbous structures isn't it? right at the base of that and these bulbous structures are known as bulbillus or it is otherwise referred as bulbule okay what is its function they are pulsatile uh, bulb like structure and it helps in circulating blood okay now once it is inside once these uh, what you call afferent branchial arteries are inside the wall of the pharynx it uh, you can see uh, it gives off transverse vessels okay could you find the transverse vessel this is one transverse vessel here there is another one here there is another one okay similarly uh, uh, towards the dorsal side also you can see so it gives up transverse vessels okay it, this transverse vessel it passes through synaptically if you remember we referred synaptically as a uh, structure which connects the primary gill bar with the secondary gill bar okay so here we have the secondary gill bar this is the secondary gill bar okay so this uh, this one is the transverse vessel and it can uh, is continuous with the secondary gill bar so another uh, vessel blood vessel it passes through the secondary gill bar and it is referred as a secondary afferent branchial artery okay i hope it is clear right so the sinus venosus the ventral aorta from the ventral aorta the f pri the primary efferent uh, branchial artery at the base of each of the uh, um, what you call primary efferent branchial artery you can see the bulbillus right and uh, when while running uh, along the this one the pharyngeal wall the primary efferent branchial artery it gives off transverse vessels these transverse vessels connect with the um, efferent branchial artery inside the uh, secondary gill bar okay and hence it is referred as a secondary uh, efferent branchial artery okay so that is uh, so while the blood is passing through the primary and the secondary afferent branchial arteries gaseous exchange take place so the blood contains carbon dioxide and the water inside it contains oxygen so the oxygen from the uh, pharyngeal cavity the water inside the pharyngeal cavity it moves through the pharyngeal wall and the arterial wall and it reaches the what you call uh, blood inside the uh, afferent branchial arteries while carbon dioxide it moves in opposite direction and reaches the water in the pharyngeal cavity okay once this gaseous exchange has taken place the water moves out through the gill slits into the atrial cavity outside okay now what happens to the oxygen rich uh, what you call blood oxygen rich blood it is collected by one minute so we can we are going to start the next level okay so you can see this uh, blood from the pharyngeal wall it is collected by another set of blood vessels right these blood vessels are referred as efferent branchial arteries okay and these efferent branchial arteries they join to with the dorsal you can see over here the lateral dorsal aorta okay so you can see uh, there are two vessels the right and the left lateral dorsal aorta and these uh, what you call uh, efferent branchial vessels open into the lateral dorsal aorta on the respective sides okay and these dorsal aorta uh, anteriorly they continue into the, the carotid artery okay you have left and the right carotid artery and this supply the oral hood region clear while posteriorly almost towards the posterior part of the pharynx or behind the pharynx the two lateral aorta it joins together and forms a median dorsal aorta clear okay so the two lateral dorsal aorta it joins together to form the 
single median dorsal aorta and this dorsal aorta it moves uh, or it runs just above the intestinal region right median dorsal aorta it runs posteriorly uh, and it usually lies it runs between notochord and the intestine so here you can find uh, the uh, what do you call the notochord will be over here this is the notochord okay and this is the intestine isn't it this is the intestine this part is the intestine so you can see the uh, median dorsal aorta it runs below uh, between the notochord and the uh, what you call the um, intestine okay now uh, this um, dorsal median dorsal aorta it continues as the caudal artery okay so these are the structures or these are the um, i mean major vessels now at, at the intestinal region these median dorsal aorta it gives off branches to intestine and this is referred as the intestinal artery clear okay so we will just um, see so we can see that there is a cycle okay there is a proper cycle through which the blood is flowing right so we will see the course of circulation okay this is how it is seen from the dorsal side i hope this figure you don't need it you learn you can learn this particular figure with all the names proper okay so this is uh, any one of the figures uh, is uh, you know the other one is better with all the parts correctly given okay here you can see where do we start from so we will start with the um, sinus venosus that is where we started last time isn't it so the sinus venosus uh, here you can see right sinus venosus uh, from the uh, anterior as well as the posterior ventral uh, ventrolateral sides the cardinal veins bring the uh, blood okay and the two cardinal veins it joins together to form the ductus cuvieri or what is referred as the yeah common cardinal vein and it takes blood to the sinus venosus now another one it is a parietal vein parietal vein it brings blood from the dorsal body wall right another one is the subintestinal vein subintestinal vein it uh, takes blood from the caudal vein from the intestinal region through the intestinal veins and at the mid gut diverticulum it forms a hepatic portal vein and from the dorsal side of the uh, mid gut diverticulum arises the hepatic vein which joins the sinus venous clear okay now uh, next we can see how the blood is taken sinus venosus from there ventral iota okay from there efferent branchial vessels into the pharyngeal wall from the pharyngeal wall efferent branchial vessels collect the blood this blood contains more amount of oxygen then from the efferent branchial vessels the blood is uh, blood passes to the lat two lateral dorsal iota which joins together to form the median dorsal iota okay and the median dorsal iota it gives off blood to the ventrolateral wall the caudal vessel it gives off branches to intestinal region it gives off branches to dorsal side okay so these are the um, this is the cycle okay you have to learn the cycle plus that figure i hope this is clear right so when we speak about the course of uh, circulation so this is what you have to draw okay so i hope this is clear and you please learn to draw the diagram which shows the blood vascular system as well as the course of uh, blood flow. Okay. Thank you.